Thank you, Shannon. Only days after the city's inspector general issued a scathing report on the deficiencies of CPD's mental health program, tonight a first-hand account from a veteran cop. She was in need of help and tried to do the right thing, but got little in return. And a story you will see only on WGN. Our Patrick Elwood introduces you to her now. Pat? Ray and Micah, good evening. She's been on the force 15 years, has received a lot of commendations over those years. But at a time when she says she needed the department's help the most, she says she was let down time and again. It is a job as complex as they come. A police officer. Stop my hey. These days, as the profession continues to evolve, many police officers will tell you it has never been a more challenging but still rewarding time on the job. I wanted to help people. Sarah Hecker started at CPD in September of 2007. She says being a cop is the only thing she ever wanted to do. I um, wanted to make a difference in people's lives. After her knee was shattered while making an arrest in 2010, Hecker was thrust into what she claims to be a maze of bureaucratic red tape. Today, she is still trying to mend her body and soul. But the process has left her in a very dark place at times. Sarah, I'm going to ask you a really tough question. If you don't want to answer it, I respect that. Have you had suicidal ideation? Yeah. That's how Sarah feels today in the fall of 2022. But turn back the clock to the wide-eyed Sarah Hacker fresh out of the academy in September of 2007. I was so excited to go out there and, and be the change that everyone speaks about. Her career took a turn for the worse in 2010, and the course has yet to be corrected. It was December 22nd of 2010. Um, there was a foot pursuit going on. Before the cuffs came out, two more officers appeared on the scene and tackled the suspect, and then all three fell on Sarah. I heard, um, it sounded like a tree branch snap, and it was my leg. Her knee was badly damaged as a result. My knee was completely blown out. Over the next six months, Hecker was off the job as she underwent a rebuild of her knee, ligament replacements, and physical therapy. I worked my way back to light duty. But her return would be short, just two weeks, until she was back on paid medical leave. I felt something off again on my leg. Bone spurs had developed and shredded the repaired ligaments. I was using a cane or a walker. Um, I can't do simple things that parents love to do with their kids, such as sit on the floor and play Barbies with her. Um, you know, walk her to the park and push her on the swing. Her physical ordeal continued to take its toll. And mentally, she says her well-being has been crushed every bit as her damaged right knee. I felt destroyed. I mean, not being able to be a mother and a wife, it, 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 it's difficult when you're trying to, you know, get better and take care of yourself. On March 24th of this year, Sarah was awarded duty disability, 75% of her pay while being on leave. That very same day, she officially let her superiors know she was in a very dark place, psychologically speaking. Sarah sent a second email four days later on March 28th, saying, quote, I am so physically and mentally drained at this point. After a mandated independent assessment of her mental health per CPD rules, she was diagnosed in May with PTSD and persistent depressive disorder, and psychological treatment was recommended. Okay. The same month, she underwent another surgery, this one a biggie, a total knee replacement. In late June, the CPD's medical section sent her a list of approved doctors, therapists. It took another month, she says, to get an appointment with the doctor she chose, and Sarah was not happy with the results of their initial meeting. Following that, Sarah sent an email in July 2022 expressing her dissatisfaction to CPD Medical with that doctor. But his name appeared on the same list of department approved professionals when she received the same exact list weeks later. In mid-September, CPD Medical turned Sarah's case over to the city's outside contractor for HR, Gallagher and Bassett, or G&B for short. On September 15th, Sarah says a nurse from G&B called and left her a voicemail. 
Sarah said the nurse said she found a doctor and if Sarah felt like hurting herself or somebody else, then she should let the nurse know immediately. Sarah said the nurse said she'd be in touch with her again later that day. But that was the last time Sarah heard from her. She did not reach back out to GMB for follow-up. In early October, WGN Investigates submitted a Freedom of Information Act requesting to CPD, asking for the number of officers who have asked for EAP assistance since the consent decree was passed in early of 2019. More than a month later, CPD has yet to respond to that FOIA request. I've had days where I did not want to be alive. I didn't act on it because of my family. Maybe my story one day will help someone from not hurting themselves. I hope that officers realize that you can get better with or without the department. You can get better and you can, I need a break. Ugh. Since March of 2022, when Sarah first asked for mental health help through the EAP program, five Chicago police officers have died by suicide. One of them was Patsy Swank. She was an incredible human being, um, someone who wanted to really help people. Her brother Ryan says the family still mourns her loss every day. And he's upset to hear of Sarah's efforts to get help through EAP. It angers me because I know my sister wanted that help too. Um, but for someone who is clearly saying that they need the help and this city still refusing to help them when they're putting their lives on the line for this city, it's just, there's no words for it. Eugene Roy retired a few years back from CPD as chief of detectives. He applauds Sarah's courage and says it's obvious the CPD's employee assistance program is in need of repair. There could be several others at the very least, some other, other Sarah's out there too. That's a question, you know, they, they talk about what keeps you up at night. And one of the things that keeps you up at night is asking that question. How many other Sarahs are there out there? Sarah has now taken it upon herself to pay out of pocket to see a therapist, $7,000 so far. Her husband is also a police officer. Sarah has received 19 department commendations. Do you feel like you've been victimized again by this process? Yeah, 100%. Sarah has a message for Mayor Lightfoot. We need efficient mental health care. We need to help our officers because we're hurting. When asked to comment on Sarah's case, with her permission, CPD Superintendent David Brown refused to do so. The Media Relations Department issued this statement, quote, while we will not comment on specific cases, ensuring our officers have the wellness resources they need is a top priority for the Chicago Police Department. The Employee Assistance Program, which currently consists of 16 licen licensed clinicians, is expanding to 22 clinicians, one for each police district. Whether the need is for immediate in-person telehealth or phone consultation the EAP is available to all department members and their families free of charge and available 24 hours a day seven days a week all sessions are privileged and remain confidential unquote the consent decree mandates that a counseling session with a licensed mental health professional must be granted to an officer within two weeks of that request that obviously was not the case here. We will continue to follow Sarah's story. Mm -hmm. Very revealing. Very Indeed. revealing. We're sure well, Pat. Thank you for sharing that. Well, if you or anybody you know is suffering from a mental health crisis, you can call the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The number is 988. Help is free and it is available 24-7.